are in St. Louis, Missouri. We're actually going to be starting our explorations in St. Louis, visiting the Arch. I think we're going all the way up there today. We're going to be taking the tram ride going 630 feet up into the Arch, overlooking the beautiful city of St. Louis. I know pretty much nothing about the Arch. I know it's a part of our national park system, but I'm excited to kind of learn more about why this is even here. It's pretty awesome though. Overlooking it when you drive up to the city is epic. Let's go. The Gateway Arch was a multi-decade vision incepted in 1935 to commemorate Thomas Jefferson's path of westward expansion. After Thomas Jefferson negotiated the Louisiana Purchase in 1803, doubling the size of the United States, thousands of people went to St. Louis to start their long journey west, thanks to the routes laid by explorers like Lewis and Clark. Manifest destiny, or the belief that it was American settlers' God-given right to expand west, misplaced and killed hundreds of thousands of native tribes and Mexican peoples that called the west home. The museum in the arch touches on some of the impacts to the native peoples of our land, and how disease, dispute, and decimation of the land and animals they relied on killed 60% of the Native American population from 1800 to 1900. But despite the arch's controversial representation of expansion, it is an incredible architectural feat. In 1947, a nationwide design competition was held to determine the design of the Jefferson National Expansion Memorial. Aero Saarinen's groundbreaking design for the stainless steel arch won, but construction didn't begin until 1961, long after Aero had passed. The arch required 886 tons of stainless steel, an incredible architectural precision to complete. Since its opening in 1967, more than 25 million visitors have taken the tram up to the top where you can get a one-of-a-kind perspective of the city. Across the street from the arch is the old courthouse, where the enslaved Harriet and Dred Scott filed for freedom after Missouri was admitted as a slave state in the Missouri Compromise. The Scots were denied their freedom after the Missouri Supreme Court ruled no African Americans were entitled to citizenship. This decision was a turning point in what many feel sparked the start of the Civil War. Very cool experience. Highly recommend if you're coming to the St. Louis area. But we have worked up quite an appetite. So we're gonna go grab some barbecue. St. Louis barbecue is a thing. When we asked where we should go for barbecue, everyone recommended Pappy's. It's like an institution. I think it was voted best ribs in the entire country by Food Network. They have walls just lined with all of the people that have come here to enjoy the ribs. We went with a half rack of the ribs and they are beautiful. We're also so hungry that Dennis also got a brisket sandwich, but the ribs look like the showstopper here. You've never eaten ribs before? I mean, I have, but like at, at home, I guess I've never ordered them out. So what do I do? <laughs> oh my God. You can just tear into them. Yes. But I mean, if you want to be civilized about it, you use your knife. Okay. Like this? Melt in your mouth goodness. Salty. The sauce has like a nice tang to it. It's got a vinegar base, I think. Oh yeah. Probably some of the best pork ribs I've ever had. We're playing trivia, we're at a brew, we've made lots of friends. There's a thing called St. Louis style pizza. They use this Gravel cheese, and it's a very, very thin crust. We've heard from so many people that it's like a must try when you're in St. Louis. We've been pretty skeptical, but someone offered us some, so we're gonna try it. It doesn't look like any different from a normal pizza. I feel like I just had like a tost Tostina's pizza roll kind of vibe. The cheese is the shining star here. And toasted ravioli. That's also a thing. Why is this a thing? Stop asking questions to eat it. It is delicious. The next morning, we took a stroll through Forest Park, one of the largest public parks in the United States, nearly 455 acres larger than Central Park in New York City. Aside from its beautiful lakes and gazebos, the park has a lot of history, being home to the 1904 Louisiana Purchase Exposition, or the World Fair. The fair brought over 20 million visitors from across the world during its eight months and showcased different inventions of the time 
had rides, and the invention of several classic foods we know and love today. But it also had some controversial exhibits, like a human zoo they called ethnographic displays. This park is fantastic. What a wonderful way to be able to spend a day. They have so many different activities for you to do here. It's also home to the art museum, the zoo, all of which are free, by the way. Like literally anything that is arts related is completely free whether you live here or not. It's amazing, you don't find that in many places. But we're really hot, so we're gonna find a way to cool down, get away from this heat. So many choices, it's insane. They even have like a 21 and up section that's made with actual alcohol. I just tried the champagne sorbet, it'll get you a little buzz. Dennis went with a lavender cone with gooey butter cake, which I guess butter cake is a St. Louis special. Now we're kind of checking two birds with one stone here. I ended up getting a vegan tahini one made with coconut milk and chocolate chips. It's like nutty, sweet, delicious. The waffle cone was supposedly invented in St. Louis during the World Fair. An Italian immigrant had a patent on the idea behind the waffle cone, but when the ice cream maker at one of the stalls ended up running out of containers, he teamed up with the Italian immigrant and uh, a waffle cone was created. Now you can think about this every time you have a delicious ice cream cone. As you double fist. Mm -hmm. Here we go, your turn. <laughs> Our last stop for the day was Cahokia Mounds, an Illinois state park about 15 minutes from the city. The area where St. Louis is located today is on the ancestral territory for a group of 12 to 13 tribes in the upper Mississippi River Valley, called the Mississippian Peoples. Cahokia Mounds was the hub, acting as the trading center for tens of thousands of people living in this region. Its population at its peak during 10,050 to 1200 AD was larger than many European cities at the time, including London. By the mid-18th century, only five principal tribes remained. The mounds here at the state park of Cahokia are the few remnants of the Grand City, as most of the mounds were demolished during St. Louis's development. We had no idea this even existed. This is incredible. We've been to so many ancient civilizations when we were in Mexico. We had no idea that one existed here in the United States of America this large. So I'm really glad we came here and got to see this side of the history. I think so many people just focus on exploring the city of St. Louis and this is just a stone throw away. Highly, highly recommend coming here. The Interpretive Center was closed during our visit, which was a bummer, but there is an app you can download that gives you an augmented reality of what it would have looked like. And if you're coming here in the future, hopefully the Interpretive Center will be open for you. Just remember when you visit, it is a very sacred place. So show it the respect that it deserves because it is powerful, people. But come here, it really is amazing. Have we mentioned it's hot? But we're really hot. It's so hot today. Seriously, St. Louis in the summer is scorching. It is a balmy, humid 100 degrees today. And we'll tell you what, the only way we are able to make it through hot days like this is by staying hydrated with our favorite electrolyte on the go mix, Element. Have you ever felt like you've drank a ton of water but you still don't feel hydrated? Most of us, even when we're not sweating out on hot summer days or doing an intense workout, are lacking the vital nutrients like potassium, magnesium, and sodium that our bodies need to stay hydrated. Element's science-backed electrolyte ratio helps us replenish what's lost through our sweat and allows our bodies to function optimally. Other popular electrolyte beverages are filled with sugar. Some of the more popular brands having as much as two and a half tablespoons. Too much sugar, especially added sugars, is not good for your body. It's known to spike your glucose levels. It can lead to insulin resistance. We drink Element's Tasty Electrolyte Mixes because they have zero sugar, no fillers, no artificial colors, and they don't use fake flavoring like Castorium. Ew. With eight delicious flavors to choose from, Element has your taste buds covered. A few of our favorites right now are the mango chili, lemon habanero, orange, raspberry. We also love the chocolate. It's really good as a substitution for hot cocoa. If you're interested in giving all of the flavors a try so that you can find your favorite and stay hydrated and healthy on the go, make sure to use the link in the video description below and get a free sample pack that includes every flavor with your first order. No Saturday would be complete without a stop at a farmer's market. We went to Solard Farmer's Market, one of the oldest in the country that dates back to 1838. This is a banh mi sandwich. I was kind of skeptical, but then I saw that guy spreading chicken heart pate on the bun before he like finished off the sandwich, and oh my god, I'm excited. 
Very nice bomb meat. Everything's super fresh, the cilantro. The meat is uh, it's cooked perfectly. I'm not sure I can even taste the uh, chicken heart pate, but the fact that it's there makes it better. If you come to the Soulard Market and you don't buy one of those, you mess it up. They're making it with sea moss. I've heard this is like the new cool, organic, healthy trend, I think. But it's because sea moss is incredibly good for you. It has like 92 of the 102 minerals that your body needs. And so they're making food with the sea moss. They also sell sea moss to go, so I think we're gonna get some. Try it it's out. delicious. You would never know if there's anything like sea related in it. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. So good. This is so good. Yeah, so good. You come here, come to Sea Boss. I think this is my favorite thing we've eaten. Really, it's so good. That was a fantastic market. We are loaded up on all the goodies. We have so many fresh veg, we got some meat, eggs. We are, we're ready to go for the whole week. I love shopping at farmer's markets and this one had so much like soul and vibrancy. It's also awesome that it's so historic. I think we're gonna walk around for a little bit since the rain has stopped for our last day in St. Louis and maybe grab a brew next. After you guys, I just love it. Victor and Josiah from the brewery we were at the other night. We're literally pulling up. Woo. Fantastic. Come to Union Loafers if you're looking for pizza. I know it's not St. Louis style pizza, but it's worth it. It's delicious. Here we are, well spent. I ended up getting a cold brew coffee stout. I'm vibing on it right now, I don't know why. Maybe because I'm three beers in. <laughs> it's been so fun here in St. Louis. We didn't get to do nearly as much as we would have liked to do. There's so much more to see. City Museum is supposed to be absolutely epic. We got to drive by it and it looks insane but they also have the Cardinal Stadium and Anheuser-Busch does a whole tour. This is where their like, headquarters are, so if you're big into Bush, I definitely think that's a very fun experience. It's not our beer. We prefer more of the microbrewery vibe. If you're interested in learning more about the history of St. Louis, highly recommend going on a tour with CSTL. They offer different neighborhood tours showing the history of St. Louis, and Josiah is one of the tour guides, which is really, really fun. So we didn't get to do that during our short stay here, but next time. But you should definitely do it. And you should definitely do it. And I just want to mention, it is so fun to have met our friends here and to have like run into them again without any pre-planning. It was fate. We're having a great time. Thank you, St. Louis. Cheers, bros. Cheers. So, hey, what's happening? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Dude, I cannot wait to rip it. You're already ripping into it. Are you serious? I so I'm sorry. What the heck, man? Mm. That one's pretty. Oh, that one's kind of creepy.